Jesus brings comfort to the world in his word. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What do you think of when you hear the term oil crisis? What's the first thing comes to mind? Well, possibly $4 a gallon for oil, or for gasoline, I should say. Perhaps you have somewhere tucked back in your memory, those of you who have been driving for a while, a gas gauge that you've been driving and driving and it's firmly stuck on the E for empty or maybe on the R if you have a European car for reserve. A little light comes on, right? Those of you who have a little light and you think, hmm, I wonder how much longer I have before I run out of gas. And then I'm always amazed. I always see some poor person, not poor as in whatever, but maybe on the side of the road, about maybe a mile up, you see their vehicle parked on the side of the road and you see them walking with a gas can. And they're walking with a gas can as if they always anticipated they were going to run out of gas, right? Rather than preparing in advance. But I guess maybe they see that as preparing in advance, caring. I hope I'm not offending anybody. If you've got a gas can in your car, forget what I just said. But it is a little crazy, right? Well, the oil crisis that Jesus is speaking to us this morning about is the final oil crisis of the world, the one that the world faces. It will be when Jesus comes a second time. The question is, will the world be prepared? Well, let's just take a closer look at Jesus' first coming illustration. And he begins speaking with, this is what the kingdom of God will be like. Well, let's begin with the importance of lamp oil in Jesus' day. Running out meant immediate darkness, danger, maybe even helplessness. People were so fearful that in their day they would actually wear a string with a little extra vial of oil attached to their hands so that they would always have that oil if some emergency came up. Now, this night that Jesus is speaking of, plenty of oil in the lamp, described by the bridegroom. And it's very important that they have it, right? Because Jesus is speaking of his second coming. The day and the hour that only, of course, God the Father knows. Did you notice, though, how all ten of them were asleep while waiting the bridegroom? Now, Jesus doesn't rebuke them for being asleep, not like when his disciples on the night that he was betrayed fell asleep, and it's like, why couldn't you stay up for an hour? He doesn't say anything about them being asleep. I believe it's because they were all in peace at that very moment. Peace and joy waiting for the bridegroom to come. They all knew he was coming, and they all had their lamps fueled and ready. Ready, that is, until it took longer than what they had ever anticipated for the bridegroom to come. And that is Jesus' case in point. They all had plenty of time to prepare in advance and knew exactly at what time the bride would, agree, would arrive, but, or did they really? Think about it. At the time of Jesus' first coming, people actually were not punctual. And I would say they had probably an excuse for that. Think about when the first manufactured watch came about. First manufactured Fitbit, your cell phones, your vehicle clocks, kitchens, stoves and microwaves, alarm clocks in the bedrooms. When did they come about? I don't know the exact manufacturing date. But how many time devices were around at the time of Jesus' first coming? Zip, zero, nada, right? All that they had was, of course, the sun. And what's happening? This is happening at night when the bridegroom is coming. 
Jesus' point is that they need to be prepared for the bridegroom to arrive, whether it be night or by day. And so, the alarm does go off. It goes off at midnight. The bridegroom finally comes, and what happens? Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Think about this. 50% of those who were there had run out of oil. 50% awake that night in darkness. Let me ask you. <clears throat> in this parable of Jesus, our loving, compassionate Son of God, when the 50% of them who were prepared for the bridegroom, what do they say? Nope. Go find your own. My words, of course. Or maybe even, I told you so. Do you struggle with the words from our loving, compassionate Son of God when the bridegroom has shut the door on 50% of those who were gathered that day? Garried for that feast? And when he's, they say, Lord, Lord, open to us, they plead with him. The greatest struggle in these words from our loving, compassionate Son of God are the bridegroom's words. I do not know you. This is Jesus' warning for 100% of the world. You know Jesus is a bridegroom who is coming at an unexpected time. So don't you think that it would be wise of us to be sharing your oil with the foolish of the world now? Way before Jesus comes again. We know he's coming. Shouldn't we be telling people how to be prepared for Jesus, the bridegroom who is coming soon? And no, that is not a rhetorical question. Jesus tells us, let your light shine among others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You didn't forget those words, did you? Let your light shine among others, that they may see your good works. Have you ever been to a restaurant, looked over the menu, and kind of zeroed in on a part of the menu that says, a baked potato, a loaded baked potato, right? You can put almost everything that you want on that. I think what Jesus just said is loaded. Let your light shine, he says. In other words, don't hide your faith. Don't wait to show it. Let your faith shine. How do you do it? He tells us. Showing your good works. The key is actually showing them, right? Now, sometimes good works will come to you. And I will give you an example. Last week, I was at the BP station down here. A lot of people in there getting gasoline. One lady comes up to me, pulls me out of nowhere, I guess, and just kind of says to me, could you give me a jump? That is a good work that actually I didn't expect just kind of came to me. No, I didn't tell her no. <laughs> but I did tell her I didn't have any cables. And she says, well, let me look. So she went in her car and she had cables. Boom. Vehicle starts right away. The key to showing is to be out in the world, maybe looking for good works to do, or again, waiting for them to just come to you. Let the Holy Spirit Bring something to you that you can do for someone else, remembering everyone is your neighbor. And in Jesus' words, too, don't miss the purpose of your good works. What is the purpose? To give glory to your Father. 